The kind of things that uh, interest me and influence my work, I guess um, most things interest me. But I'm really particularly interested in history and landscape and the way those things can manifest as presences in, in our current environments and how they talk back to us about um, contemporary conditions. Um, and I'm particularly interested in the way that I present my work through installation that people experience the work rather than know it in a theoretical way. So um, if I'm interested in exploring melancholy and grief and loss, which was what my previous work um, was showing or was, was talking about, I'm interested that people will come into the work and really feel those experiences rather than know them in a traditional sense. So I often work with um, almost theatrical type components in my work that would um, help a viewer to experience my work in this way. So a lot of the time I collaborate with sound artists and I talk to them about the way that sound can um, affect people and, and make them read the visual aspects of my work in a particular way. And I guess I'm always looking outside the visual arts for the way that, th for things that might influence me. So um, I, I noticed that David talks a little bit about uh, the way that um, art needs to be removed from life, which I agree with, but I also, my work is very much about life and, and sort of larger issues about the lives that we have and, and the histories that intertwine the way that we experience the world. So I, I do always want to reflect on life and it is from life that my work comes. <laughs> The work for the Biennale um, brings up some of the interests that I've had in my work over a number of years. And I think as a contemporary Australian artist, because I am dealing with landscape, I'm particularly interested in acknowledging and recognising the history of this landscape. And I often think of, of Australia as a landscape as almost a place that's um, sitting within a trauma when I think about cultural genocide and I think about Indigenous history. And for the first time, this work really responds to those issues in a really direct way. Even, I suppose, previously, those ideas have almost been a footnote in my work, an acknowledgement um, and a recognition, you know, as a respect, I guess. But this work um, examines specifically um, genocide in southwestern Australia and um, a massacre that occurred in the early 19th century in the Ludlow Stewart Forest. And it's one of those amazing histories that um, sort of got lost and no one really talks about. There's very little documented evidence of it. Some people say that six people were murdered and other people say that there's 3,000. And there's been very few archaeological digs in Australian history. I think there's been some in Queensland. And a lot of the time that's because of cultural reasons and not wanting to um, disturb graves. But in fact, there have been a number of bodies that have um, been discovered accidentally in the Ludlow Stewart Forest. So this, um, this work is particularly interested in thinking about how we forget history and how that um, manifests as a cultural condition. Um, and how that talks about the, the current crisis of um, Indigenous Australia and, and white Australia in relation to that. And, um, and I think it's impossible as an Australian artist to not acknowledge this place that we're working in in some way. Well, it's funny this idea of living in a precarious age, because I think we've probably always lived in a precarious age. We're probably just a little bit more aware of it now. Um, I think as Australians we live in a precarious age environmentally. I think um, we live in a precarious age in terms of um, uh, forgetting to possibly um, value our culture and our cultures and Indigenous culture and our visual arts culture and our creative cultures. Um, and I think um, we've much to gain from um, you know, cementing them in a less precarious way in our current culture.